Hello and welcome to Spain where you join me at the Ascari circuit where we're here to drive this, the BMW M2 competition. There's a few changes under the bonnet, the big one being you've got the M3 and M4's motor in here. So we're going to see if that change has made a difference now. In a way it's sad to see that this M2 competition motor has replaced the old M2 motor. But with stringent emissions regulations, even this engine had to be fitted with a particulate filter to see it meet those regulations. Heading out onto the track at Ascari, not too much has changed chassis-wise, but uh, mostly about the engine, which now has 302 kilowatts and an extra 50 newton meters of torque. So, is the M2 competition better or worse than the M2? Well. I think that really depends on whether you like the M3 or the M4 because now it does feel quite similar but still as a package still still for me is the it's the M car to have just dynamically it still feels good the chassis moves about nicely underneath you it's still a fun car to drive really is nimble the rear end is really playful and it's it's because of the shorter wheelbase it's it's nice to have a bit of fun with it doesn't want to bite you as hard as like an M3 or an M4 is. And that single turbocharger before to now the twin turbocharger, it really changes the driving experience quite significantly. This new M2 competition doesn't look dramatically different from the one it replaces. However, look closer and there are larger front air dams for the oil coolers. Lightweight 19 inch forged alloys are fit to the standard which house all new M brakes for better stopping power. There's even a new wing mirror. And the M2 badge is now black. The engine bay gets a new bulkhead strut, while the new dual flow exhaust system spits out less emissions. In the interior, not too much has changed. If you look closely, the steering wheel gets two M buttons. The start button is now red, but the seats are all new and exclusive to the M2. And they do work, as I didn't get tossed out of the window into turn one. If you order the manual, which you probably should, you'll get this attractive Alcantara gear sock. And happily, I was given a manual to take up into the hills around Ascari. So, as I mentioned yesterday, there's the M3, M4 motor under the bonnet here. And uh, you drive a little bit differently now. It's more of a torquey engine, which I'm maybe not as much of a fan of, but it does allow you to kind of hold gears on a twisty mountain road like this. So you can hold one gear and actually get involved with the steering and drive it without having to worry too much about the shift. But if you're a guy who likes a good manual box, this is a good one. So, is it a better car than before? Well. Underneath it's still got those great M2 characteristics that make it such a fun car to drive. But you can argue that it didn't really need that extra kick of torque and the old engine's smooth acceleration gave it a unique character. But none of that really matters anymore because this is the only one you can now buy. So as I get more and more to grips with this M2, you start leaning on it more and more and you really start to put down the power and and learn the limits of the rear end. Even so, I still think this is the most fun you can have in a car for under a million rand. The M2 competition arrives in South Africa in September 2018 and sets the bar at 972,029 rands for the manual and 1,026,505 rand for the auto. Hey Ash. Hey Chero. 